Good morning, good morning. Oh, let's put some music. I Tech think, I think yeah. we're hearing multiple things at the same time. No, we're not. Oh, it is. We're, we're good. Yeah. Good morning, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you had a amazing week. Hope you're taking your mental health into consideration. And uh, I hope you have an exciting uh, weekend coming forth. Yeah, so um, w- um, welcome to Tech Impact 007. Uh, it's, it's just happening, huh? the numbers are going up. Uh, my name is Bruce Harms, and uh, content creator, blockchain enthusiast, and Cardano advocate. And uh, here's my son, Jean-Luc. Um, as uh, he just mentioned, my name is Jean-Luc. Um, my peers know me as Lucky. I am currently a student at the University of Aruba and also a uh, tech enthusiast. Yes, yes, yes. So. Um, what we're going to do today is I did a little bit of research and I wanted to bounce that research with you. Tell me, tell me. We're going to start off with a great recommendation of Netflix today. Oh. I love it when Netflix offers these awesome uh, documentaries. It's called uh, Code Bias. Code Bias. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's it was one of the most informative um, documentaries I've seen in a long time um, in sort of in the form of The Great Hack. And mm. as, as tech enthusiasts and um, students of some programming and um, w- making a difference in the community with technology, mm-hmm. it was very enlightening to make us understand uh, what's happening in the world right now. And I kind of wanted to talk about that documentary. So uh, uh, Jeff just pulled it up for us, our producer. And yeah, this is a great story that starts from a person called Joy Bulo- Buola. Muini, and she was a... Um, you probably butchered that. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. But her name is Joy, <laughs> and Joy. she's an MIT student. Oh, wow. And she went to a... Um, and spoiler alert, we're going to talk about the documentary, but don't worry, there's a lot more in it than what we're going to discuss today. But yeah, so Joy was a student at MIT, mm-hmm. and she did, she did a certain class, I forgot the exact name of it, where um, they challenge uh, students to make something they see in science fiction movies or science fiction inspired uh, content like books. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And she went to create this um, software called, she called it an Aspire Mirror to inspire her in the morning. An Aspire Mirror. Yeah, so she, she created a software for that and for it to work, she started experimenting with a face detection software, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? And um, when she started using it and she's of course, uh, she's black, you know, she's a dark complexion. Uh-huh. It wasn't res- registering her face and she had to put on a white mask to get detected. And, you know, she went uh-huh. on t- and that's, that's, that started a journey of exploration on why that is and that the whole documentary unfolds on that start, you could say. So, jean do you know anything about facial recognition software and What's what? How's it? How it, it's potentially being used, or so? Um, from what I know, and I, I actually have not delved very deep into this. I've just lightly skimmed the surface of when it comes to facial uh, recognition, AI facial recognition, <clears throat> and uh, how that uh, relates to us and our privacy. I am very aware that Facebook and Google uh, and uh, ba- pretty much. Let's say Big Brother, everybody, with their ha- they have advanced facial recognition software. If you, if you just put your face on their website, they immediately know who you are. You know, let's, uh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna bounce with you a little bit all those things what Tell I've me. learned this morning. So I have I have made many many notes. I've got about four pages of notes that I kind of want to sift through together with you. Mm-hmm. And you know, talking about facial recognition as entertainment 
So we've seen all like TikTok videos and, and Snapchat. And you know, people love entertaining each other. My right? 3DS does it all the time. Yeah, 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 right. Um, but what I did not know is that, for example, I'm going to turn on the music a tiny bit. Um, is that when you're using those superimposure filters, like turn your face into a lion, mm -hmm. they're actually detecting you and putting you in a database without you knowing. Oh. So, yeah, so Snapchat's been doing that. And I think, I think our show is morphing a bit. I think it's important that we're, I kind of want to throw in information out there and to ma make people realize, because I know that the community cares about what happens to them, right? Mm -hmm, so that, mm -hmm. of course, I'll even throw out there that, you know, when, when you're somebody that questions a vaccine program, right? I think you should know this too. And I think anybody really that's asking the right questions, which is usually, you know, the catalyst towards other theories of the worldview, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is that now um, there are very powerful tools being used. Yes. And um, I want to, I kind of want to go through it. So Snapchat, for example, uh, for our listeners, when we're entertaining and when we're using these filters with these companies, because that's what they are, mm -hmm. um, and you're using something for free, um, that's the flip side that you're selling your data. It, you're, you're not only selling your data, but now it's getting a little scarier that they're sharing your face with agencies, maybe. And um, this is what the documentary dives very deep into. So I'll, I'll move forward. So her name is Joy. Mm -hmm. And um, a uh, African American, African American um, MIT student, MIT student, and uh, what started as a project uh, for fun ended up opening up a lot of truths. And mm. she actually went out there. And I'm going to throw out another um, title of a book, which is called uh, "Weapons of Math: M A T H." Destruction. Weapons of math destruction. By a woman called Kathy O'Neill. Mm -hmm. And um, I've, I've just purchased it this morning, so I'm going to dive a bit deeper. Well, the title already sounds extremely ominous. Yes, and uh, what's very interesting, you know, when I listen to my friends and uh, even us, we, we start thinking about 1984 and George Orwell, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. the, the reality is, I think, is that it's it's here and it's alive and kicking, you know? So we, we are being we are being tracked. And I want to go further and, and, and kind of share terminologies with you. So, um, of course, we've known uh, what an algorithm is, right? Yes, yes. But what is it? <laughs> it's um, an algorithm. Is I just realized that there's also mathematical algorithms, but there's then... They're all mathematical. Well, they're all mathematical, yeah. yeah. But you have like an algorithm to solve a, a mathematical problem. But then when you talk, go into computer sciences, a algorithm can be used to do various things. Right. I'm pretty sure an AI is an algorithm. It's based, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. So let, let, let's pull it back a bit. So I'll share with you um, how Kathy frames uh, the definition of algorithm, using historical information to make a prediction of the future. Broad. Of but, course it's broad. But that's, that's pretty much it because that but, applies everything that it can do. But I, but I love what it does. The, the, the sentence uses historical information, so data from the past, and it's trying to predict, which makes it a little bit scary, if you apply it to human beings and what they do and, and what they're going to do in the future. And that mm -hmm. can be abused, of course, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. um, what, what was very interesting, and to quote Joy, is that when, when she dived deeper and she actually went and forensically went through some data sets that mm -hmm. are used in many different applications. And what she found is, is that what happened in the past historically with people is skewing the data. And when you skew the data, you're gonna get skewed results. And, yeah, and, yeah. and, there's, and we're gonna go through a list of applications that have happened um, in the last couple of years and recent months. But what do you, what do you mean by uh, the, the data skewed, that it gives a skewed perspective? Well, what, for example, going back on um, the face recognition software that she used, mm -hmm. um, she tested it out and found out that it is 86%, and this is just a rough Remembrance is it's about that line 86 uh, percent accurate with black males mm -hmm. and a hundred percent accurate 
with white males. Interesting. Um, and 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 the graphs they vary from from the 80s up until the 100. But you, mm -hmm. we, what people need to understand, what what the community needs to understand, is that when you fluctuate 20, that's a big number, you know. And that and if if that's not working well, mm -hmm. why is it not working well? And it would seem that the data sets that were available for the software to work just reflect our past and you could kind of connect that with civil rights movements and segregation and stuff like that yeah. and and that's kind of the rabbit hole um that the, the documentary tries to you know unveil pretty much mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um i thought it was very enlightening but of course what we're going to stick to is you know the vocabulary that was used yeah yeah so yeah so and 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 here's a beautiful quote and You know, you can call this plagiarism, but I'm just saying this is very important for people to listen to. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to use our platform to kind of push out. And I think that's what the documentary so, would like. So to prevent plagiarism, who said it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So okay. Joy, Joy framed it beautifully. Data is destiny. <laughs> Data is destiny. Well, in a, in a digital world, right? It predicts the future. And now we've, we're living in a real... Um, Let's call it uh, reality. That, that that is absolutely true. A real reality. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're living in a I'm, reality. Where it's it's it digital true. reality, which is real, right? Digital reality is very real. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Well, but somebody could argue that no, but digital is not um, is not real. But the thing is, these things are applied in our real lives. I can And, um, yeah. I can uh, build up build on that. Uh, recently, I've been watching out. Um, Uh, this small little YouTube series by this channel called Disrupt TV. You should watch it. It's amazing videos. It goes into tech. It goes into augmented reality. It goes into uh, music. Uh, wow. Small experiments. Very broad and very professionally done. And it that's what we want. Kind of reminds me of, of Adult Swim in the way that they show their videos and they have small little breaks and a little, little text and everything. You'll, you'll really enjoy it. But so... They started a small little series called The World's Deadliest Viruses. Right. But he says in parentheses, computer viruses. Okay. And um, it basically goes into the the creation, the, the the creation of the virus, the person behind it, how it spread, its uh -huh. impact, and then the, the the consequences thereof with the person and the virus and everything. Sure. And um, it's very, very interesting, but a sentence he, he had was This um, this man who managed to spread a virus that connected with most computers in the world back in 2003, 2004-ish, so in the relatively early days of the internet, um, managed to infect and basically set up a a network, okay, a black market network, and nobody in the black market could escape his hands because he spread everywhere with the virus and everything. And eventually... Is this a real event? or This is was it? a real event, okay. yes, yes. Um, eventually, it got to a point where he would press his digital buttons on his computer, but the real men would go and do the job. But his influence on just the digital space was so massive that it had real-life consequences. Yes, and this is, this is what... Um can be very destructive for the future of humanity. Mm -hmm. And uh, it sounds so heavy, but what's really scary that it is happening, you know? And um, I found on all, I have another correlation that I thought was pretty cool. Tell me, tell me. So um, let's get back a little bit to machine learning, you know? So mm -hmm. um, machine learning, what I understand of it is you can look at uh, what computers do or what they're supposed to be doing for us is computing, of course. There's yeah. so solving issues, solving problems. There is uh, instructional things we can do with computers. Can like you tell it what to do? Tell it what to do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Set, set up instruction, if then go to. Mm -hmm. But then you had uh, give it a set of data and sort it and, and come out with uh, results. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that has become usually popular in the last 10 years, you could say. Yeah. And um, so what are the benefits and downsides of these uh, two ways of computing? Well, th th that is for a computer engineer to explain. But, <laughs> but what I'm understanding uh -huh. is 
once you start working with enormous amounts of data and we think about the skewed aspect of it and that it reflects who we are to right? society yeah because data we make it i make a thinking mistake myself that data is pure data yeah, is yeah. good data is but that's not true because how is the data created from what yes right? yes so there is yes. no there is no police that puts puts in ethics and you know i'm going to fast forward a little bit and in the end math mm -hmm. and ethics do, don't necessarily live in the same space you know there's a separation there usually yes yeah so that that is kind of the issue that's why science fiction has always said hmm the robots are going to be monsters they're not they're going to be void of humanity you know and, and, mm -hmm. and it, it can be certainly argued um but going back to machine learning where you feed data sets and then you come out with predictions really mm -hmm. and what they're what they're calling it so if i i'm going to quote the writer Kathy O'Neill, um, they're calling it a black box. So they, they, they don't know what's going on. Nobody knows what's going on, least of which um, the people that designed it, you know? <laughs> and what's, Isn't that horrifying, creating something? Yeah, but, and, and, but what's interesting that people are, you know, th th these are the people that are making the difference in the world, protecting us and let, uh, letting us know. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what she calls it is a asymmetrical system. Because I'll give you an example. Tell me. Um, let's say there is a software that is going to predict if you're going to have a great credit credit card, a uh, credit credit score, right? So in America, everybody has a credit score. Uh, credit, yeah. It's a credit card society. Um, what if the software can predict your future, but they've realized that? the data and it goes back to oppressed and minorities mm -hmm. they're going to always be predicted against and there's no way to input other data they're not represented so you're a, a credit card user yeah but there's no way for you to counter that data you're not represented you know there's no like um association of uh uh, credit card holders that can go back into that data and say you know what what about the improvements that were made you just got a job you know that kind of thing plus Aren't you one could say that we should get that data, right? But then you go into the ethics of should we really? Do we have to stratify people to a point where you can accurately predict everyone within society? But this is, that's a different question, though. But still, the 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 tracking it goes deep, buddy. Yeah, exactly. Goes deep, and it's um, it's, really, it's really. I find it so interesting. Um, but let, let's continue a little bit with um, that concept, right? So machine learning, um, the interesting thing is there are plenty, very recent articles that were released in this month mm -hmm. about how to fight bias. So this is already established mm -hmm. by, um, by the, let's, let's call it the activism community for data security and, and, and protecting, um, let's call it data rights. Mm -hmm. And I yeah, believe yeah, in yeah. that. I believe yeah. we have to start looking at uh, our own data as our own, right? Mm -hmm. So um, let's let's go to a practical example in London. Tell me. Um, in London, there is what the the police forces are doing is simply mm -hmm. putting a fan somewhere with advanced face recognition um, equipment, really, and they're just randomly um, taking people's faces without their permission wow. and, and that's happening right now wow that that reminds me of china well I, I actually have that i oh, have <laughs> i have that um uh, so I, that's one of my notes from the yeah. documentary is that london and china have a lot of similarities on app the application and um in hong kong mm -hmm. there was a huge huge uprising against facial recognition software mm -hmm. where um people were breaking cameras not necessarily breaking them but they were definitely breaking some obstructing others putting paraplus right so mm -hmm. excuse me uh, spraying some spraying yeah, and yeah, yeah. because they're just without their permission they're being tracked and what people need to realize is that the most dangerous thing of efficient face detecting software is that now you don't need the smartphone anymore right and mm -hmm. anywhere you go you will be constantly tracked and i'm going to quote a citizen um, in the U.S., 
Oh. Um, from from um, Virginia. Virginia. Yeah, that's and I thought it was so. It was a great way to to. It was a great analogy. The Nazis did it. With you're, you're the right. Nazis did it with the Jews with the with the armbands and then group them and then track them. You know, animals are being tracked, and why am I being tracked now without my permission and for what reason? And tracking is the first layer of oppression, mm -hmm. right? So we have enough historical examples that we have to be wary of what's going on and we have to be present. And that's why I think it's important. On Aruba, do we have cameras? Of course. Yeah, but do we have facial de de detection software? Um, I don't want to talk bad about the government, but I don't, I don't, I don't think their IT group is uh, very advanced <laughs> in, that, in that regard. Why Maybe would you say that a government has an IT group? <laughs> Why wouldn't they have? Well, they probably have one, but for their network. For their network. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think they have some form <laughs> of uh, uh, investigation bureau. You could have just answered no, Jean-Luc. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think we have uh, facial de um, detection software. Maybe they tell us, but we don't know. No, no, they don't. I don't think so. And um, it, it, right now for them, we're, we're such a small community that the tracking can be done just through the phone. But um, going back to Hong Kong, um, it was amazing that they, um, they rose up to that. And um, we should always keep looking at Hong Kong. Um, another thing that we learned is that we, the Western world and you know, the Eastern world and mm -hmm. China in particular, mm -hmm. all are tracking. The only yes. difference is that it's, um, it's under the radar in the US. And in China, they're just open about it. And yeah, in China, you can your credit score all of a sudden goes down. Oh, they have score. a social credit yeah, score. Social credit score. Yeah, yes, not yes. a credit card not, score. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Sorry for um, to explain. Social credit score. Yeah. So if, can if you imagine you are, that? It's crazy. If you are a good citizen, your social credit score goes up, and you get access to certain things. But if you're a bad citizen, and the government gets to decide if you're a bad citizen you lose access to certain things and rights to certain things. Yeah, but he, here we go. Here's the interesting correlation with the black box. So mm -hmm. um, in, in the US and in China, I'll, I'm gonna give some numbers that um, I found. There are six tech companies leading the way with AI and facial recognition, and in China there are three. Um, so in the US it's a little bit more competitive. But the interesting in China is that it's applied, their digital passport is applied in every way. So wow. even if you wanted not to be part of that, then you would have to live in a box, like a, like a real one, because all access to public transportation yes. is done with this digital ID. And it's confirmed, they always use face for login and log out. If you want to buy a house or live somewhere? No, Sean, look, if you want to buy bananas. Wow. If you want to go from your house to the, to the supermarket or the fair market, right? Mm -hmm. It's all done with facial recognition. And, and, and they're just open about it. And another thing, which is very scary, is that your credit score in China also tracks what you say. So if you speak ill against the Chinese Communistic Party, the, they simply drop your score. So this is a whole new version of oppression. If you say we need to pull, all of a sudden you lose 10 points. Exactly, which is bad for your social which is status. horrifying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, um, George Orwell, 1984, we're here. It is here. And the only way for us to do anything, well, we're not in China. Luckily. Luckily. And what happens in the Western side of things, um, it's a little bit more nuanced. What is the word? I'm looking for a word. I think a better way to, to say it is it took a government uh, security uh, breach. Breach. You mean? The whistleblower, yes. A rat. A, ra <laughs> a rat, yeah. yeah, a, yeah, yeah. A whistleblower. Snowden. Yeah, Snowden. Yeah. It took Snowden, and any uh, for those who don't know, he was uh, a person who worked for um, uh, data security, was it? In the in the American government, he was uh, CIA. CIA in the CIA, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he he found out that pretty much without anybody telling anybody that the government was tracking everybody. Yeah, but but now it's worse. Now, now we're volunteering yeah, the now information. It's, now it's worse. But I yeah. remember it was such a major big deal because all of a sudden he was a criminal. Oh yeah, 
and he needed to flee. You see, well, I don't agree, but uh, yeah, he's, he's the the law can definitely define him as one. But you know, so yeah, I, I wanted to also uh, share that we can look at governments doing it, but there's also private, smaller applications that are happening. So going back to Virginia. Um, at the Atlantic Towers, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they use something they call the biometric security system in the building. And um, one of the tenants explained that uh, she's being harassed by the, by the building itself. So she will go outside mm -hmm. and, and if she breaks some kind of code of ethics or code of, uh, of, of, of behavior that mm -hmm. is stipulated in, in, in the manual or the tenant manual, whatever you want to call it, um, you get a picture and notes about what is allowed or not what? allowed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and um, the, the, they're rising against that. And the, what's happening also is that um, the writers of these books now frame it in a way that um, these things are tested in poor communities first. So companies come out with uh, bio, excuse me, I, I left backwards, uh, biometric security software, uh -huh. and then they apply it in small scale in poor communities yeah. as a testing ground. And then they try to scale it up and and take it to a a bigger community or more enriched community. I, but um, yeah. I cannot express how unnerving yes. it is. So so yeah. let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. So they live in the in this building, right? An apartment complex. That's yeah. It. yeah, yeah, yeah. And if they somehow break, uh, if they breach the terms of the contract in any way, shape, or form, that usually involves like dropping something, breaking something, moving a couch, maybe contracts get crazy all of a sudden they get a picture yeah but we're on their phone email to them oh no they get a printout with notes print it out print it out you get it in your mailbox in hey, your mailbox you've been doing this and this and this we don't like it dude you can't do it anymore boom in in your in your own apartment well is it your apartment that's well you're that, renting what? it out but but the the idea usually is, is that it's behind your door behind exactly. closed doors yeah and so you can't accidentally drop something and then you get harassed by the house itself with notes and pictures and everything yeah big brother is watching oh. absolutely so scary huh? that's that's super because super unnerving what what we want as let's say neighborhood watch is we have mm. cameras to protect us yeah, yeah. but we, we don't want cameras to tell us what to do <laughs> right like for example i'm handing out flyers about the cameras and saying, you know, I don't want to be tracked by the camera as a tenant. I want the camera to protect me from intruders, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But what's happening, people are sending out flyers that um, they might be abusing these cameras and they get a citation from, 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 the, from the building. The building was called, um, let me go back, Atlantic Towers. The future is here, guys. The you future is here. You get yeah. told by your house that you're not allowed to do that. But I have another, and here comes my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. Think about it for a second. So, masks. Masks. Right. Yes. So, if you wear a mask, mm -hmm. it's hard for them. It gets really hard. I know. Right? So, it's great. wearing a mask, mm -hmm. a black one like we have for our show, our first couple of shows, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. would protect you from facial recognition. I can add on, add on to that. Recently, I learned that there's this, this guy, sadly, I cannot remember his name, who makes privacy classes. Cool. It basically, he he was first into IT. Yeah. Of course. Of course. And he figured out about this, all of this camera uh, surveillance uh, stuff that's going on. Yeah. And he decided to do something about it, which was making glasses that um, takes advantage of the fact that cameras can see in infrared and basically blinds the camera by absorbing and reflecting and basically confusing the camera and just yeah, making yeah. your face a white awesome. blur. I want one. Well, we don't need one on Aruba, but you know, I would want one if I would, I, I would know about it, that it's available, that kind of technology is deployed, excuse me, in my community. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. yeah, let me, let me add on to that. In Hong Kong, what, they, what people walk around with now is lasers. So with <laughs> the lasers, they just, yeah, they confuse the... So it, it's very interesting that, you know, a lot of people don't understand that, that hacking, uh -huh. that's its origin. It's to disrupt, disrupt control, you know, yeah. and exploit, um, you know, abuse. And we can hack a system without ever touching the keyboard. You yes. know, so that, yes. that, that, that yes. I think that w that's what I want to come back to the mask. Mm -hmm. Now that I know 
that if I wear the mask, I'm currently putting on a black mask. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> now I'm protected. You, now you're protected. So now facial recognition is going to have a hard time. Very hard time. Recognizing well, me. they already checked us out, so kind of yeah, late yeah, on this one. I'm, but, I'm late. Yeah, yeah, super late. But going back, think about this for a second, guys. There is a huge anti-mask movement that comes from the same algorithms, and people are just now. I just I just I got out of the boutique. That. I just got out of the boutique, uh -huh, and, a, uh -huh. and a very good friend of mine, I'm not mentioning, and I had my mask on because I had to mm -hmm. be in the boutique. I'm trying, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, do, I'm doing my part. And he tells me, take that off, man, you know? And I already know the algo that's within him, you know, the, 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 the worldview that has been pushed. Yeah. And now yeah. I see the incentive from certain groups around the world. Yeah, you be against the mask so we can keep tracking you. Yeah, we keep doing Simply that. Simply put. Please, keep, go ahead. Yeah, you, be, you get mad. Don't wear your mask, because guess what? I can see you. It's funny. It would be much better. <laughs> now I'm going to start wearing a mask just, just to be, yeah. Yeah, just to be anonymous. Let, it's, <laughs> so earlier we said, right, uh, that the digital space is an effect on the, on the physical space, and physical space is an effect on the digital space. Right? There you go. Well, there you go. Now this mask that was originally intended to protect us in the physical space can now be used to protect us in the digital space. But again, you see, there is great application to get lots and groups of people to not do it. And now they believe that in their yeah. core. Yeah. And actually, I'm going to say, if you, let, me, let me subscribe to you that you care about yourself yes. enough to take a stand. Maybe you should think about wearing the mask and just say, I'm just protecting myself, but you're doing a double layer, right? So you're protecting yourself from viruses but you're also protecting yourself from from tracking so yeah that was a, that was my side of things um i'm go we're gonna time is flying on this subject we're already yes. 30 minutes in oh wow um i want to talk about another deployment that was very interesting it was called tay tay.ai okay. yeah it was it was released by microsoft on twitter mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they made a bot and the bot went out there and sort of like HAL 9000, uh -huh. right? From, from Space Odyssey to the, the movie Space Odyssey 2001. They just sent him out there and what is he gonna become? You know what he became? What? A racist... F um, f oh, yeah, yeah, but I know about this one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it came Fort back totally racist. Totally racist, wanna know what happened? Explain. 4chan. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go, yeah. Fortune. They trolled them, they trolled, they, they trolled, the, they, they trolled the bot. So basically... Um, sorry, sorry, that was me. That was you? Yeah. Ah, okay. Um, so 4chan heard about that. It's yeah. like, guys, Microsoft just released a bot on Twitter. And they, they, they are letting the internet, so they're letting us freely talk to it. And we've noticed that it will learn based on the conversation it has right. with people. So can we make it um, a racist bigot, guys? Can we, can we feed it anti-Semitic, Nazi racist propaganda? And so, 4chan being 4chan, trying to always troll the internet and kind of prove a point, they band it together, and they spent the rest of the, the time that the AI was on, on Twitter to make it into an anti-Semitic You know, I'm sorry to say, man, but these 4chan people, they don't understand the destruction they do. You know, because to them it's funny. Yes. But it's so detached from reality and they underestimate the enormous impact. And it's starting, they used to be the place where you go for freedom of speech, but now it's become part of the problem. Yeah, this yeah, this yeah. disconnection, this sarcasm um, um, for the lulls, right? For the lulls. What is it? You know, just for those that are listening that don't know that terminology, um, it comes from um, trolling the internet and... Uh, a lot of problems have happened because um, people cause major damage in communities just for trolling people online. For fun. And it's but, AKA for fun, for, what, the, for the LOL, what laugh out loud. Is, what is trolling? Yeah, a trolling is just being someone you're not mm -hmm. because there are no consequences. So people will be behind the procure. Mm -hmm. they're, they're probably liberals. Mm -hmm. They probably believe in and all the good things in life, but mm -hmm. online they get to be the baddest person on the planet and they'll, and they'll have fun with that. I, 
hmm, interesting. Right? That's how I see it. That's how you see yeah. being a troll. Being a troll being is a troll. just because you can't do anything anyway. And, and to me, it's a form of entertainment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, I'm just here to make get a reaction out of you. Yeah. I'm going to say the worst things possible. And the more you react, the more I will, the deeper I will go. Don't feed the trolls. That's the thing. Don't feed the I trolls. I call them that. Huh? I yeah, call them. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I don't talk to trolls. Because I don't, don't even believe you. I don't even believe you mean yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So, you know? so, so yeah. from what I understood as somebody who's been raised with the internet. Um, yeah. Trolling is basically the, or trolling is the act of purposely trying to get a reaction out of somebody by any means necessary for entertainment. Yeah, well, there you go. We and agree. Usually that means uh, being very anti-Semitic, very racist, um, very um, attacking very aggressive and uh once once the internet came uh, became familiar with trolls people who troll um as you said don't feed the trolls yeah if people are trying to troll you don't don't talk to them because that's that's all they want a reaction and look what they did they 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 killed they they killed the project you know um and okay it is microsoft but i don't think there was ill intention Mm -hmm. but let's let's continue on uh, uh another application of or let's put it this way algo news um so for example they use an algorithm technology to automate hiring right so hiring Uh people so Uh amazon did that oh and um you know what came out the the bot ended up never hiring a woman oh yes i've heard of this so that was a that was a big bias in the data sets because the the, pro, the programmers didn't want that to happen mm-hmm, mm-hmm, they mm-hmm. wanted an efficient system yes but again we're we're learning now as you know the experts in ai mm-hmm. that we're having issues with data sets and the data sets reflect the the you know pretty much racist history that uh, humanity yeah. has carried or you know oppressive things that have happened mm-hmm. throughout history mm-hmm. so yeah um that was one part of it i wanted to also talk about um a case that happened in the United States where they tried to, a scoring system for teachers. A scoring system for teachers. So again, an algorithm based um, software mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. automated and um, it was called a HISD evaluation software. And uh, they actually lost the case. The, a couple of teachers rose up against that initiative and um, they had to take it down and stop using it. So um, for us people that believe in efficiency of data, I just got a wake up call. You know, after we have to reevaluate, and what I'm thinking is, um, if we think about Cardano mm-hmm. and the contract in Ethiopia, yeah, yeah, I don't know, but I do think that there's no black box there because I think they use a voucher system with the blockchain, so you can you can see what's going on. Yeah, so it's not a black box. Is that true? Do you think? I don't know. <laughs> we don't know. We're gonna have I to research that. Know. One. I don't yeah. know. I I didn't yeah. uh, get into the <laughs> into the uh, mechanics and the the uh, software of the scoring system in Ethiopia. Yeah. So let's go back to that. Um, I think we have to start compiling that vocabulary. So machine learning, mm-hmm. data sets, uh, scoring systems. Mm-hmm. And what we're trying to do as human beings and corporations is to create efficiency and make well-educated decisions. And that's what powerful computing can do for us. But we're having issues with with the data. And um, we have to realize that these systems are governing our lives right now. It's happening. Yes, yes. And for us on Aruba, it's because, you know, we we, we consume so much um, American... Content, West, right? Western US, content, yeah, yeah Western yeah. content. Um, um, I want to share. There is an algorithmic justice league, so I would highly recommend um, for people to go check that out. An the, algorithmic justice league, yeah, where um, these issues that we just talked about. So let's move towards some solutions instead uh-huh. of the scary stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that uh, yeah? They've uh, the, the the joy together with um, Miss O'Neill mm-hmm. and a couple of other. Um, let's call them academic 
a- academic writers of this issue mm-hmm. um, have started an algorithm, algorithmic justice league to position and protect us. And, uh, against the algorithms. Against, um, you know, the, the biases. So that's why it's called code bias. The biases that are arising and, and not helping out communities which is supposed to be happening. We're supposed to use technology to help communities and empower them. And empower, but yeah. now it's being abused in many shapes and forms. For profit, of course. Oh, yeah. For profit, for sure. So, um, yeah, that's. Uh, I thought it was pretty important to go through that today. Um, there's another article that was released. It's called Equity as Code. How Can It Eliminate AI Bias? By Christopher Burke, Forbes Technology Council. So mm-hmm. there is good news. It's not all bad. And um, he, he's written extensively and is trying to have impact and force um, companies to do something about it. Another good news was that Joy, for the going back to the facial recognition software, IBM has one. And um, they, they, they took her in and they, wow. the, the development team um, re- duplicated her, her findings. And they did something about it. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, what, of course, we would like to see is that um, the other tech companies to follow suit, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know. Um, but, yeah, I think... Um, it's funny how this all started with a project to try to make something in sci-fi isn't real. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. It's crazy. The sci-fi um, is becoming real. That's, that, that's actually like a question, you know. Does science follow sci-fi or does sci-fi predict science? Oh, I wish I wish that when I was doing news, you would ask me that because I have an answer. My answer is very simple: it's Jules Verne. Jules Verne. Jules, Jules Verne, Verne is the father uh, of the sci-fi before it was real. So yes. he, you know, uh, what was it? Twenty thousand leagues under the sea is the submarine. Ten thousand. The numbers. The numbers change in 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 translation. Okay, correct us. <laughs> Put it on the chat. Well, a big number leagues. Under I think the it's sea. twenty thousand leagues 20, under the sea. Yeah, I think ten sounds too simple. Mm. I think it has to roll out twenty thousand leagues under the sea. See, and you remember, it looked like a barracuda, a metal barracuda or a yeah, metal yeah. St- a sturgeon fish. Mm-hmm. And he also wrote uh, around the world in eighty days with a balloon. Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. also wrote about that. You know, I think the shooting the rocket onto the moon. And but that's a whole other conversation. But yeah, um, Jules Fern is is kind of proof of imagination first, mm-hmm. and then you know amazing people, very smart engineers that go to making that happen with lots of knowledge. Yeah, there's also a great show by the way about uh, jet engines and how they work. And oh. it's, yeah, we did some, we push technology a lot in, in, in to its limits and. I'll, I'll I'll bring that I, back I later think the, on. The reason I think the fact that the saying. It's not rocket science. It's a testament to <laughs> how complex rocket science. Gets. Nice one, nice one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I'm gonna um, we're, we're gonna finish finish off the show. I think I just wanted to add another another article, and um, these are things that you and me are interested in. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. if we talk about um, the new wave of technology, or at least um, the facets of technology that are arising, we're mm-hmm. going to be talking about. You know, machine intelligence, so this machine learning, um, blockchain-based decentralized governance yeah. that can kind of help um, de-skewing data a mm-hmm, little bit, mm-hmm, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's also risks in there. And here we're even talking about genome editing, and that's what people are so scared of. Genome editing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the, these are technologies that are... That CRISPR, are, CRISPR. Ooh. That, we're Different do, conversation. <laughs> write, that, write that down. Um <laughs> And especially artificial intelligence development companies, and um, you know, let, let let let's get a list for it and um, share it with the community. So, I wanted to give a thanks to um, everybody listening. Um, I thought it was a great topic. Go check out uh, Code Bias on Netflix. It is super informative, super interesting. If you're part of the Tech Impact family, yeah. And um, please go check out also. Um, I buy. Do you buy Kindle books? Kindle books? No. Do you buy books? Not really. It's no. okay. I um, pirate them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever admit that. Um, yeah, and go check out Weapons of um, Math Destruction by Kathy O'Neill. Super interesting. Um, I'm definitely buying it on my Kindle. I sort of, I, I, I collect books like that so I can sift through it a little bit mm-hmm. while I'm drinking coffee or drinking a glass of wine. So, um, Jean-Luc, we need to go through the list. The Soppy the Mix. Family. Soppy Mix list. 
Um, I'm here trying to look for the the schedule. One second, um, guys. We're gonna do it just now. I didn't. We didn't even get through all the content. It's so no, much. It's so yes, much. It's I, too I, much. I felt it. I felt it. But it's okay. I think. I think a good uh, place to continue is to focus more on um, just privacy because we were talking a lot more about surveillance, but with cameras. Right. But of course, they surveillance us in many more ways. One second, guys. I'm looking for the menu. Because the thing is, the Soppy Mix family has really grown in yes. a short amount of time. And we have so many shows. And I'm, I'm trying to pull it up. What, what do we have? To, Jeff, why did you come in for a second? What do we have at 7? Raw. Okay, we have Raw at 7 tonight, raw. guys. So please uh, dive back in. And um, how many shows seven. do we have now, Jeff? 11. 11 shows. So we have a new show. Oh, yeah, let's talk about that for a second. Coming so, well, soon. Coming soon. If we are allowed to talk about it. Yeah, right. Soppy Mix Kids. Soppy Mix Kids. So what are we going to do? We're going to do a tournament for them? Do a little... We can do that. Retro we gaming tournament? Like a, like a speed run, maybe, of Mario? Speed run of original <laughs> or, Mario? Yeah. That's hard. Is it? Yeah. Very, very, very difficult. Have you ever, have you ever completed that game? Uh, Super Mario yeah. Bros. Original. Have I ever completed? Yeah. I have. Bowser. Yes, yes, I have. I remember. I uh, was playing it on a... Uh, what do you call those again? Not a virtual machine. Yeah, emulator. Come An on, man. Emulator. There you go. Good morning. Good, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> let me go through it. So, um, Monday, 6.30 p.m., Sincerely Carlonina. And at 8 p.m., Pol Politica to Cruel con Marisol Di Mas. Oh, wow. that's going to be interesting. Hot, hot items. We're hot in the selection season for the listeners yes. outside. And on Tuesday, we're going to have at 6 p.m. Florin Talk. 8 o'clock, Ejecuta. At 9 o'clock, Unfuckwithable. Nice. Nice. Uh, at 8 p.m. Wednesday, Pillow Talk. 6.30, we have Respaldo. And 6.30, Respaldo. Uh, see, that, that, that's really great. Great. I, and I love that they come here and help out um, and educate the public. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Thursday, we're going to have 6.30, Bam Papia Salute. And Soppy Mix, the original OG, 7.30 p.m. Uh, anybody special for Soppy Mix? We're going to recap the debate. Recap oh. the debate. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, and on Saturday, we'll, have us, we'll be back, Tech Impact. We'll be talking about... Um, our amazing week at uh, e-commerce week, the yes. future of digital yes. payments together with Sharon, hopefully. And um, it was amazing. It was amazing. It was forward thinking. It was stressful. And um, we're going to be following up with a event soon, coming soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's and Saturday tonight at seven. Ra, thank you, everybody. Jean-Luc, some last words for this show. Not all is lost. There are solutions. Yes, yes, sir. Knowledge is power. All right, guys. So we're going to wind out here and see you guys next week. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.